Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, jumping in on this uh, Friday night, party night. It is April 23rd, 2021, uh, 2021's date. 8.12 p.m. West Coast time here in California. And the latest quake out there on the globe is going to be a 4.2 in this silent area of uh, just north of Japan along the uh, Japan Trench right there. Pacific Ring of Fire, northwestern part, an area I've been watching for quite some time for uh, some significant movement. I'll show you here in a little bit why. The latest here from the USGS folks uh, shows that uh, 6.4 that struck a little bit earlier near Tonga, Fiji area. Pretty deep earthquake, 289 kilometers. I believe they've uh, made that <clears throat> made that quake a little bit deeper than when I did the update video when it came out when it first hit. Uh, but magnitude remains uh, the same. Area remains the same as well. This is in a region where we've seen some uh, pretty deep earthquake activity over the last couple days or so. We kind of talked about this last night on the update video. Uh, about 500, 550 kilometer deep earthquakes uh, were striking within this vicinity here. Just a matter of time before we've seen some more significant movement there. So far, the 6.4 is just a uh, one of the larger quakes we've seen uh, within uh, oh, the past couple weeks or so. Uh, prior to that 6.4, we did see uh, some further movement in areas where we had seen, well, larger quakes in the past. Uh, but I guess, you know, what I, the way I see it is the activity that we've seen here in northern Alaska, down here in the south uh, uh, Shetland, Shetland Islands, Drake Passage area, uh, these are pretty much aftershocks from uh, previous larger quakes here uh, months ago, if not uh, over a year or so for the Alaska region. Pretty much like aftershocks in a way, uh, just continuing uh, in the Ala North Alaska region. And like I mentioned down here south of Drake Passage, there was a couple couple moderate, I'm going to say aftershocks there, 5.0 and a 48 We'd have to go back uh, many months to see uh, where the uh, main activity was at, um, and we can just we can simply go back and just look at the, uh, the last 30 days or so. Gives a little idea of how um, really inactive it is in this region. Uh, but uh, we'd have to go like way further back than um, 30 days to see the activity there. Um, what I do want to point out real quick here is the Japan area, north of Japan. Uh, I, w I would say pretty much down here along the Japan Trench, right about this cutoff area right here just south of Tokyo. Uh, we have not seen any, any six-pointers at all. And this is the last 30 days, 4.5 and above. Okay, look over here at the magnitudes. 5.7, I believe, is about the strongest that we've seen there in that region. And even as we go up here to the north along this area, the subduction zone right here uh, near the curl... Uh, islands area no six pointers even even up here south of this area I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even attempt to say that word uh, I'll let you guys read that just a couple fours and a five over the last 30 days even along the Aleutian trench area no significant movement up here folks and this is kind of what's concerning in a way is because of the lack of activity and we could even go back further than the uh, 30 days and see the lack of significant earthquakes in this region here of the world. Just a pretty, uh, it, it's, it's definitely building up here. It's running up uh, to quite a bit of resistance in a way along this area of the Pacific Ring of Fire. So it's, uh, and that's why I keep saying in my update videos, that's something we're going to have to watch and, uh, and look forward to, I think, when it comes to a bigger uh, larger release of pressure within this region right here. It's just it's very absent folks uh, Compared to all the activity we've seen on the larger size uh, Larger side down here through the uh, Kermadec Islands Samoa region all up along the Samoan Islands uh, Solomon Islands and uh, Yeah, it's just it's it's kind of it's puzzling in a way But I believe here we're gonna see uh, probably some significant movement here pretty soon and it's possible this uh, 6.4 may have set things into motion. We're seeing a little bit of new increase in activity up here in that region I was just talking about, a 4.3 striking 
uh, well north of Japan inland into the subduction zone here, 49 kilometers below surface inland, right? And that's the area we're kind of watching here. It's a major player, uh, Japan Trench, major player when it comes to producing some significant uh, mega earthquakes in this area. Of course, everyone remembers the 2000, uh, uh, 2011, right? I think it was. I get mixed up on my years. 2011, uh, uh, Fukushima and uh, you know the major major uh, uh, tidal wave that it produced there, uh, some heavy damage in that uh, Japan area from that uh, major quake back then. Um, so that's just one area to look at. Uh, that 4.3. And this is all activity following. Let's go back over here real quick. Uh, this is activity following the 6.4 that struck today. So some further movement, or six point, yeah, 6.4 that struck today. Further movement in the Chile area, okay? We're, we've been watching some deep movement here along the uh, uh, Peru-Chile Trench inland into this subduction zone. Uh, a couple deeper earthquakes at 4.2 struck all after that 6.4. There in the uh, 6.4 that struck over there in the Samoa region. Samoa and Tonga. This one here is uh, pretty deep, a little bit deeper, 4.6, more inland. But I believe this one, uh, when did that one occur? I think that one occurred last night, possibly. Um, check the date there. I think, yeah. So this is still within, within that 24-hour period. But the newer activity up here to the north tells me that uh, we're not done with some uh, further movement there. Especially, especially with the uh, movement that we've seen down here near the Drake Passage area. Just kind of a reshuffling of the, pa uh, the plates at the moment. Uh, the Mid-Atlantic rift, rift Zone out here did see some uh, further activity prior uh, prior to that uh, 6.4. Actually, it looks like there was one um, afterwards, too. I know there was one prior. Let's see where that one was at. It may have been this one right here. Yeah, that one there was prior to the 6.4. I'm just kind of looking at the, you know, how these larger deep earthquakes play a, a major role in shuffling up the plates here. But uh, yeah, this 5.0 uh, struck the mid-Atlantic out here prior to the 6.4 in Tonga. And then uh, right after the 6.4, we've seen a little bit further movement to the north uh, on the same uh, mid-Atlantic uh, ridge out here, plate boundary, uh, 5.0 after that 6.4. So uh, you know, it's 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 shuffling things up a little bit and maybe kicking things into motion uh, to see a potential bigger quake up here in the uh, in this Japan Trench in the uh, Kuril, uh what is that Kamachata Kamachatka Kamachatka okay something like that <laughs> me and my words right oh my gosh um, but anyway within this trench area right here. Uh, and I call it the western, northwestern part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. A lot of people know that as. But uh, within this region right here, we're we're, we're looking. Uh, we're looking. That's all I'm going to say. We're looking. Uh, Philippines did see a little increase in activity today. Uh, a couple fours and uh, looks like a five pointer hit out there as well. Uh, so some movement out there. Pretty deep movement as well. 220 kilometers below the surface for that 4.3. That's uh, pretty significant deep earthquake activity so we could be looking at a uh oh a recycling of the plates out here reshuffling recycling however you want to however you want to look at it uh but we're still watching up here folks this is just kind of you know i keep mentioning it because there's a reason it's just a reason why um over here towards the middle eastern area 4.4 and even so deeper movement out there as well 195 kilometers below the surface folks we talked about this deep movement last night it's continuing uh, what else we got here? Let's go ahead and go into the western coast area, western United States region. And we'll drop this down to the all magnitude so you guys can see a little bit more uh, detailed quake activity. Alaska remains relatively quiet. We haven't seen any newer quake activity in northern Alaska. Just, uh, just a couple small microquakes scattered about the uh, tundra up there. And some movement around Anchorage. And uh, I've seen if there's any deep, deep movement into the subduction zone here. This wouldn't be deep. I don't see a whole lot. It looks like some, but not a, not a whole lot of deep movement out there. All right, so West Coast region here. Um, 
Let's see here if this is a new quake out here in the Gorda Escarpment region. I believe it is, or it's possible. It's very possible that uh, this one was from uh, continued from last night. Uh, it just hasn't dropped off the 24-hour window yet. Uh, but that was a 3.0 way out there in the ocean, way west of the Cascadia. I think we talked about that. Um, and I haven't seen the tremor map yet today. Uh, I will check that out here in a minute again. Um, it looks kind of dead out here, folks. I mean, it looks pretty... Uh, it looks pretty below average if you if you look at the big picture of the west coast when it comes to all magnitudes here we're just not seeing a whole lot and that could be a sign of uh, uh, a whopping amount of pressure over here to the western pacific that could be getting uh, ready to release some pressure here it's kind of what it's looking at at the moment uh, but we'll have to see how that uh, see how that uh, plays in part there. I just don't see a whole lot of significant movement along the west coast at the moment. Just your typical, like I said, probably below typical earthquake day in California. Uh, no major swarms to report and no specific area showing increased seismic activity. Uh, even the Ridgecrest area, I mean, that's a little little bit of aftershock activity. I'm not going to say swarming, it's just aftershock activity there, about 21 earthquakes or so uh, north of Ridgecrest near the uh, Coso field. Coso uh, Volcanic Field, I was just out there. Um, I did post some pictures on my Facebook page of uh, uh, volcanic dome features out there along Highway 395. I believe that's 395 or... Yeah, I think that's 395 right there. Uh, but it was right along the interstate, so I pulled over and took some uh, pictures of that volcanic dome. You can check it out on the Facebook page, uh, uh, The Earth Master. But uh, overall, earthquake activity pretty quiet along the western coast, folks, uh, including Idaho. We're seeing a decline in earthquake activity along the Sawtooth Fault system up there. Uh, Washington doesn't even look all that active tonight either. A small little earthquake west of Mount Rainier. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network um, map here. This is a trimmer map from the 23rd. Yep, 23rd. Still shows some activity, not quite as much. A little bit of decline in trimmer. But overall, um, still active. Now, this goes back over the last day, um, you know, since, uh, well, I don't know, since midnight. Yeah, since midnight or so. Um, so the 6.4 may play a big picture in completely stopping uh, this trimmer activity. And we won't know until, uh, we really won't know until um, tomorrow's trimmer map. Uh, to see how that 6.4 may have adjusted some uh, some release of pressure out here along the Cascadia, uh, along the west coast. So we'll see. See what it looks like tomorrow. Uh, but overall, today, uh, same movement, same area uh, for trimmer compared to the past few nights we've seen. Uh, basically, just all within Oregon, all within that uh, central area right there. Uh, volcanic seismicity, we can check out Mount Rainier real quick, see if there's anything showing up. I know there was just a small little microquake there uh, outside of the uh, volcanic zone, volcano zone. But I like to check the uh, seismographs every once in a while, see what's going on. And uh, let's go back here to the previous day. It's weird how just all of a sudden, at least on this map from the previous... It looks like it may be some type of little swarming going on up there in the uh, Mount Rainier area compared to yesterday. Or at least these are the last couple hours. This is UTC time, so I should say prior to earlier today. So I kind of have to watch that a little bit. Uh, pretty significant incoming storm, solar storm right now, folks. Uh, something to watch pretty closely. Looks like the KP indexes went, went way up there to about five earlier. Um, it has dropped down back into the green zone, but there is still, oh, actually it looks like they may have dropped it. This was red, I believe. Uh, looks like they may have dropped it a little bit. Uh, looks like 10% chance of a geomagnetic storm in the med, mid, mid latitudes. If I can spit that out. High latitudes got a 40% chance. Looks like tomorrow possibly, um, a better chance. 
Uh, an expected coronal hole stream is now moving past Earth. This was on the 24th 105 UTC time, which is, uh, well, that was just uh, a little bit ago. It contains a sector of southward BZ, and this helped push geomagnetic activity to the minor G1 geomagnetic storm threshold. Additional storming will be possible within the next 48 hours when a CME is expected to reach Earth by April 25th. Uh, visible aurora will be likely at higher latitudes. So for those lucky ones out there, you get uh, a chance to see some uh, beautiful skies. Hopefully if you got clear skies, uh, still something... Something on my list I want to see here very, very soon, folks. I just don't know when, but it's on my bucket list of things to do. Maybe this year, maybe this year. We'll see. Uh, but other than that, folks, things are pretty quiet. Even Yellowstone National Park, pretty quiet. She's sleeping. Uh, you know, doesn't want to be woken up, apparently. That six-pointer showing up, or 6.4 showing up uh, on all the seismograph stations there uh, near the Tonga area. That's that 6.4 that showed up in Yellowstone National Park. Of course... Um, all this uh, seismic equipment is pretty sensitive when it comes to picking up uh, um, activity, vibrations in the ground, geyser activity, you know, magma, lava flow. Uh, but uh, yeah, 6.4 can definitely show up on these seismographs. It just shows you how sensitive a lot of the uh, equipment is up here that's, that's used. And some of this equipment, like Old Faithful, is so squashed, uh, it shows nothing. I mean, literally, you'd have to have, I don't know, maybe an asteroid impact to make some type of a mark here on this on this seismograph there, Old Faithful. I'm not for sure why it's squashed like that, but uh, it is. Anyway, uh, I think that's it, folks. Like I said, just be on guard. Uh, we're looking at a new, you know, like I said, a little shuffling of the plates at the moment following this 6.4 in the uh, Tonga, Fiji area. It was pretty deep, and whenever we see deep movement and larger uh, magnitudes like that uh, things start to go uh, kind of interesting so especially in the quiet areas where it has been uh, very quiet for quite some time so we'll, we'll see that could be a little bad sign right there with it with a uh, subduction zone earthquake like that 4.3 being uh, being right there in that quiet zone either way hope everyone has a good night stay safe out there it is friday night a lot of uh, crazy people out there let me tell you especially especially here in this little town where i live Good Lord. All right, guys. Have a good night. Uh, computer's running good. Everything's looking good. Uh, I'm not going to jinx it. <laughs> have a good night, folks. We'll chat you a little bit later. Stay safe.